I had forgotten that on my flip camera, I had taken some pictures of the sky. Where, um, looked like chemtrails. I saw a bunch of planes flying over throughout the day, and I kept looking up, and I kept seeing what I was seeing. So I finally remembered I had captured these. We'll start with the very first one. These were actually taken in uh, October, about the mid. So let's go ahead and I'll show you. This would be, I'm at work right now. And I would be pointed towards the west. I'm seeing a nice big thick one. And sometimes it looks like you're not even on when you look up. Not normal like you're not even on planet Earth. The longer they stay up from what I've noticed, before they break apart, they seem to widen out from once they're first dispersed. And these are not just ordinary clouds, because I've been, like I said, uh, watching them throughout the day. And this is the aftermath of um, the beginning of what they've been doing. So I'm just panning around the entire sky. I'd be looking east right now. What I believe I remember doing is just going from east to west and showing the trails of them. The planet is being atmospherically altered, geoengineered. Many metals being sprayed over your head for all the different reasons that they give. Oh, if you go over to the CERN network, C-E-R-N, CERN, Google it, and just go there. They've actually got some videos with some speakers on there. And, um, well, they make their case for why they do what they do. And they've even got a woman giving a speech, I believe it was a lady, and she was talking about our GMO food and how it was actually better for us than naturally grown food, more nutritious. So they know that we're on to them, but yet they're trying to cover themselves. Are they covering up Planet X? Yeah, there's probably a chance that's part of why they do these things. They don't want you seeing what they don't want you to see. <clears throat> and they don't want you to know what they don't want you to know. They want to keep you fat, occupied, and unaware. This one would be from about 10 days later. I believe this is slightly a little bit later in the evening. I'm still at work. And as you can see, there's some of those very dark, and that is not because it's getting dark. I mean, I've been seeing these throughout the day, and somebody's going to say, oh, they're just an innocent type of cloud, but whatever.
the discussion that we had the other day when I made a video about the rapture, possibly being mid-tribulation. Part of it I didn't discuss was that um, we have things that haven't happened yet. We don't have a temple rebuilt yet. So there is nowhere for the abomination of desolation to take place from. And no, I, I don't believe the, about the uh, Israeli Minister of Housing, I think was his title, something to do with building new settlements and housing. He had called for the destruction of the Dome of the Rock. Well, not actually the, the destruction, I don't believe, but for the building of the temple. And then someone was putting out information that uh, the Dome of the Rock was going to be destroyed and all this other garbage, which was totally bogus information. They have discussed how they could peacefully do it, and they claim they could erect the new temple right next to the Dome of the Rock. This one would be from one day later. So we don't have that built yet. So there's no place for the abomination of desolation. There are just too much things in there that, and I'm not trying to put a stamp on somebody that's pre-trib and flunk you and give you an F. I'm just trying to say, look at all the other things that, that there are in there that are definitive of when you will have the taking up. I think it was Paul, and he's saying, when the man of sin is revealed, and about the abomination of desolation, he's telling you that you're going to see these things, and when you do, then the taking up is going to occur. How long after that is not actually said. It could be shortly after that, or it could be a while after that. Like I've said before, we're on God's timeline, not on ours. Nobody knows the day or the hour, but that doesn't mean you can't know the window. That's why he told you to watch the signs. We would all like to go before things got real bad and the big time world head cutting, slicing off your head, sainting you, martyring you, began. But It may not occur that way, but that's not going to alter my faith and my belief e either way. I would be ready if it was pre-tribulation, and I would be ready if it was mid-tribulation, and I was read would be ready if it was almost to the end of the Great Tribulation. So they're setting the table, just like if you were preparing a, a, a meal for a party. Nothing would be ready until everything was prepared. And then everyone would take their seats at the table. And things would begin to be served. Well, it's not quite time to sit down at the table yet. And they're getting everything ready. And this is happening right over your head, whether you want to believe it or not, whether you can understand the science of it or not. It doesn't matter to them whether you can understand it or not, because they're doing it.
So if you don't want to believe it, that's fine with them. You know, if you want to live in a fantasy where it's safe in what you believe, then you will. If you don't want to face the reality of what things are, then you won't. But that's not going to change what they are doing and what they are becoming. As far as our Ebola goes, you know, that's kind of it's kind of drifted out of the news here lately, hasn't it? And I still maintain it is a bioweapon. I don't believe it's true Ebola because we have not seen or been told about any any real bleed out. And I can remember years and years ago when they had outbreaks of it and they would talk about it and the rare photos they would show. You would have blood. And we did not see um, any photos of the Duncan man, the non-American, that they say died from it, which he could have died from the injection of this vaccine, for all we know, or, or whatever this actual agent is that they're introducing. But it's a dead giveaway because they don't live exactly like we do down in the Africas. And we're, we're, you know, we're not poor like they are. And we're a little more sanitary and whatnot. So living conditions are somewhat different down there. But it's just too, too obvious. To me it is that these outbreaks are, are located in their country over and over and over again, mainly. And so that is their testing ground. That is where they dump something, they want to test it, they want to refine it. It is their working, their true working laboratory where their animals are human subjects with no value for life, no regard for life. They are disposable to these New World Order Satanists, transhumanist bastards. You are disposable to them. I am disposable. Six million of us, somewhere around there, are disposable. It doesn't matter to them if you die, because they only want to keep enough alive to do what they command and have a much more manageable population. God loves you all. Before all hell really breaks loose, when, when you can definitely tell, you can't deny anymore that you are in the middle of tribulation. He wants to know you. He wants to save you. He wants you in his kingdom. It's where you came from in the beginning and he wants you to come home in the end. He doesn't want to lose one sheep of his flock. The devil wants you to go down the crapper with him because he wants company. He doesn't want to face punishment all by himself and his little demonic minions. He wants souls. So God will protect you if you call upon him and come to him. seek him and he'll always be there for you.